nothing but a hound dog. I'm going to show you today how to play the guitar lick and some of the chords from Robin Trower's version of Hound Dog from his 2013 album Roots and Branches. Uh, he's certainly been playing some terrific stuff over the last three or four years and thankfully he's released about four albums demonstrating that so he's a, a great guitarist. Uh, I'm going to talk about tuning first that is that Robin Trower uses 10 gauge strings on his Strat and he tunes down a whole tone to get, him, uh, to get a beefier sound a number of guitarists do that. Um, I'm not going to do that because I've got 9 gauge strings um, and if I tune down I might have to tweak the truss rod a bit and, and so on. So the fingering that I'm doing uh, is in the F position but uh, Robin Trower because he's tuned down actually plays it, plays it in the G position but what you're hearing is the song in the key of F which is what it is on the, on the record. I hope that makes sense but I thought it better to try and show you how to um, get the same key sound as it were that you that you hear on the record instead of trying to transpose things. I suppose I could have got 10 gauge strings on and tuned down a whole tone to save myself the trouble. Anyway, so here we go. Um, two things you will need to learn the the notes obviously of how the lick goes and and I'll show you some of the, the nice show you some of the nice double stops that he does. But you also need to try and get the swing feel. Uh, what I did with this song in order to try and figure out what was going on and who was playing what, I, I broke it down and, and it re-recorded it um, in my own home studio here. So I could build up the drum part, the bass part. And then I found yeah, the drum drummer plays straight through what you normally expect perhaps for blues or, or rock drumming on a track like Hand Dog. Um, then the bass player puts a little bit of swing in and they have a conga part as well uh, which also adds a nice element of swing. Um, there's harmonica playing just blues bits and pieces and an organ playing sort of stabs as it's called to accentuate the, the, the swing feel. But I'm going to play you um, some parts of that with the, the different instruments isolated so you can see what I mean by the swing. But if you, if you master the lick and then um, don't quite master the, uh, the swing feel, you might sort of think, well, I've, I'm playing all the right notes, but it just doesn't feel right. So two, two, things, two things to learn. So the lick essentially goes like this. I'll play it now without, without backing. So I'm starting on with F, but actually there's a, right at the beginning of the song, there's a slide down from, from C. So it goes. So we start on C and we slide down to F. And he plays that uh, E flat for the first time round, and the next time round he finishes with. Okay, so it's slide down from C to F. I'm going to put some tab on the screen a bit later. Uh, so it's F, and then you're hammering on A flat, A, B. So you pluck the A flat, and then hammer on the the A of the B flat. Pluck, pluck, sorry, pluck, F, okay, then you go to the fourth string, and then you play an E flat, and that's a trill at the end, so it's E flat, F, 
two on each. And then A flat, trill it to A. Which is like a hammer on, but you twiddle it, you trill it. Uh, you might, if you've not come across a trill before, you might find it a bit tricky, but it's like all the other techniques on guitar. Just keep practicing it and you'll get the hang of it. It's used a lot on instruments, uh, such as you see violin players use trills. So you hold the A flat with your first finger and then hammer on in quick su succession with your second finger. And get your speed up after a while. So, from the beginning again. Okay. We'll talk about the, the swing beat in, uh, uh, in a little while. And then when it uh, changes up, he he's cha changing up and, and playing a B flat 9. Uh, because I'm fingering all this in the F position for the reasons I mentioned earlier, actually this ninth chord gets quite easy because it's um, open D string and then just hold all those other three strings down with your first finger. Ninth chord. Used a lot in blues and jazz. So then he does a, f a flick, if you like, which is all it is, is those, those, where you're holding those three strings down at the first fret, you hold them down at the third fret. So, then play the lick again. So, putting that together again. Like the, that's the, the swing feel again, probably, isn't it? And uh, on that, when you're playing that that uh, B B flat nine, only play and well the other chord as well. Just play the the first three strings, and you can play the the fourth here, but don't play any of those. So it's da da ba da da ba ba ma da. And he plays the lick again. And then we're going for the turnaround, C9, and you can do the full ninth shape here. The tab follows if you're not familiar with the ninth shape. That's that one again, B flat nine with four strings. And then the lick. Okay, now what about the double stops? These are double stops. Great little blues thing. You do them all over the place, as long as you're playing the right notes in the right key. But they're one of those things where once you know how one works, um, let's say in F, then when you go to G, all you have to do is play that same lick two frets up. And then when you went to A, Okay, so just it's just a question of transposing it up one, two, three, or four frets one from the pattern you've learned for that one chord. So F, G. Okay, so where that is, sixth fret. And you just want two strings here. We're using the second string and the fourth string. And hold them down with, I'm holding them down with my second and third fingers. Don't do that. I find, I find when I'm playing guitar and getting chord shapes, I keep this finger sort of loose and handy, ready to make other shapes, instead of getting it into difficult positions. So, by my experience, doing your double stops there with these second and third fingers makes, makes more sense. So, second finger, sixth fret, fourth string, and your third finger, same fret, but on the second string. Okay, when you're doing this one, 
pluck the lower string first, followed by the higher one, like that. But as you do that, slide up. And to finish that, double slop, double slop, <laughs> double stop slide, you're going to go down again. But going down, don't pluck anything. Just go down and let the guitar, by the fact you're fretting it, make the noise. So it's... Okay, that's all you need. You've done your bit, and then bring your fingers back down. If you listen to the stumble and things like that, there's a lot of double stops. And you can do them in other places as well. Just explore. You can explore it for yourself. Just, just, and you'll be able to tell whether they fit in the in the key or not. Okay, so that's what Robin does now. The thing is with this is to try and play obviously what he's playing and then put your own style to it and your own feel. Um, but he leaves gaps and this is important. If you want to uh, hear real less is more stuff then listen to guitarists like uh, Peter Green. And music is about the intervals. You hear about intervals between notes. It's not about uh, packing as many notes in as possible. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't impart any musical structure or feel. But if you, if you watch when I play this sequence again, you'll see there are sort of gaps. And, uh, and Robin sometimes puts a little or something, some little bit of business like that in, in the gap, but nothing else. So it's about resisting the urge to do too much. So when you're playing the lick, it's... do now is um, play the, the, some of the deconstructed part of the song, uh, a bit of the drum track and then the drums plus congas and then you'll feel start to feel that swing that you need to get into so it's and then I'll fade the bass in by the time the whole track comes in you'll, you'll get the idea of this this, this terrific swing feel so it's and that's what you've got to put to it if you can but yeah learn how uh, learn the notes first and then it's putting that I'll show you the fretting uh, in a bit more close-up uh, if that'll help and then show you with the, um, the tab. So let's just listen for a minute to the, the drums. So you can hear that's just straight, straight pop rock blues drum. This is all that's needed. If everybody in the band swings, it'll sound funny. So the drummer's just playing through. Later in the track, I won't play it now, but later in the track, it does double up about two thirds of the way through. But that's um, just to provide a little bit of interest as the, as the song goes towards the end. And if we add the congas to that,
and to put the, the base on. Notice the economy of the, the notes on the bass. So Robin's licks and sits nicely on the top of everything. And finally, let's uh, hear the, the whole track. Well, I hope that was useful, and uh, thanks for watching, and good luck with your guitar playing, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.